Srivastava, who's with us. He's founder and strategist, IndiaCharts.com. Uh, Rohit, great to have you uh, on the program. Thanks very much for your time. Uh, so we are on the cusp of uh, 18,000, just there, almost there. Uh, we were closer there yesterday than today, but maybe, you know, uh, given the market action, it doesn't look like uh, there is any let up at all. What's your sense, near term? How are you looking at things? Yeah, good morning, Prashant. And I think uh, this is the fourth time we're getting close to the 18,000 mark. We haven't really crossed it yet. And uh, the only uh, the only thing I can uh, add over here is that uh, we need to decide what are we going to play this market on? Are we going to play it on the basis of uh, the earning cycle? Are we going to play it on the basis of macro? Or are we going to play it on the basis of sentiment? Uh, uh, so the first one is, is the odd guy out because if we actually look at it, the Indian market, we do have a mixed bag uh, over there. Uh, but when we actually move on uh, to looking at uh, other markets, especially the US market, then what we do end up seeing uh, is a much weaker earnings scenario over the next two quarters unless something changes. Now that's one. The macro scenario, nothing has really changed versus where we were, say, six to eight months ago in terms of the dollar uh, still rising, bond yields still elevated, and uh, the rate hiking cycle not yet over. And then that leaves us just to play on sentiment. And sentiment means that you look at when investors at large have turned excessively bearish, which was the situation at 15200. And then now you do have some change in that. A lot of people have started to say the low is in place, uh, positive news flows coming in. And somewhere that culminates in, you know, market speaking. We've seen that happen two, three times before. The question is, will it, will it happen all over again? We do have the setup for it to happen. Uh, you just need to watch and see what the market does uh, when it starts to uh, pull back from here. Uh, the fourth one is momentum, though. I'm surprised you didn't say that, Rohit. I mean, so if you just follow momentum, that is headed higher. Things are headed higher. <laughs> No, so, so so we do like to look at uh, not a single factor, but uh, why I said sentiment is because uh, the momentum follows the sentiment. You know, momentum can change. If I just look at my momentum indicator, it's actually flatlining. So if you see the last six, seven days of trade, it's not like the market is going up vertically. It's actually going up very slowly. You get these doji patterns, which means that uh, the open to close is small. You're not getting 300-point days, but you're getting, you know, 50-point days. Uh, on the upside. It's just that you're, you're not coming down. And so it feels like everything is moving. But uh, really speaking, if you just look at rate of change, which is what momentum is, then you'll actually see that this market is slowing down at the top end. Mm. Rohit, all this makes investing trading very tricky, right? Um, so how would you incorporate sentiment, earnings, as well as macros when you have to select individual stocks to trade in or invest in? What would your recommendations be? So the way so the way we really approach this market is uh, you know the sentiment at fifteen thousand two hundred was so extreme that it was almost close to uh, when we were in the pandemic. So we we can say that people were most bearish since uh, you know uh, two thousand and twenty uh, a month ago, more than a month ago. So from that point on, uh, we we took a bet that fine the market's going to recover. It can overshoot seventeen thousand and maybe if we are lucky get to seventeen eight hundred. Now we're already lucky. Now the question is, what do we do? The way the way I approach it, we took both long trades on both sides. We sort of closed out all our long trades between 17.2, 17.3. Over the last week, I've significantly cut down the portfolio uh, positioning, uh, you know, less than 50% uh, in the market, which means we have a high level of cash now. Uh, and we are going to simply wait. So my approach is, wait right now. Don't do anything. If nothing of the micro has changed, we will get a setup where we can probably play the short side again. Uh, if something changes, if the market does consolidate, let's presume uh, the bullish scenario is well, okay. So just let, let's say we are we are wrong about uh, the market uh, rolling over, which I think is the preferred case. Then uh, we probably see it consolidate here and between 17,500, 17,300. And if it can manage to hold up for a couple of weeks, uh, say with above 17,000, uh, then we may consider, okay, can it make one more push uh, to higher levels? But unless the, all of that happens, unless something really changes uh, in terms of what the dollar is doing, because if I just look at the USD INR, you see post the RBI, uh, you know, policy meet, uh, the currency did not strengthen even after the rate hike. It started to weaken, and my sense is it's probably heading back to above the AP mark and probably towards 83. So once we start seeing that strong dollar, 
uh, things are going to weaken again. So in short, what I'm saying is give the market time to consolidate or roll over uh, and then take the next chance that yeah, I'm still bullish from here. I think it's extremely overbought. This is not a place to be complacent. And so we've sort of pulled back on our positions uh, across both investment and trading. <clears throat> Got that. Uh, the, uh, a lot of people believe the dollar holds the key, but the dollar is not strengthening in any meaningful way, is it, Rohit? So it's had a normal pullback. Uh, if you look at the 20-week average, it fell around 103. We haven't even gone below that. And if you look at the uh, five-year breakout, basically the dollar index made a top of 103.8 in 2017, and then it reached that level again a second time in 2020. Now we are above that level. So now that level has become the support. Unless you really go back inside that, we can't say that the dollar breakout failed, right? So you had a major breakout of a five-year range. You're still just above that. And once you take support at 103, I think next you'll be at 110, 120 uh, before you know it. And last two, three days, you can actually see this word start. You, you've seen the dollar index jump up in the last two days, I think. Early days, but it looks like the bottom is in. And which is what I was pointing out to in terms of the rupee as well, because the USD INR, where the dollar versus the rupee, is already showing strength. Uh, you, you've seen it stop falling even up the, after the RBI raised rates. And I think that's a sign that uh, the up, upward move for the dollar is resumed. So, Rohit, you've lightened up on your portfolio holdings and you're holding significant cash. Which are the stocks which you've sold off and which are the stocks that you're still holding on to? Yeah, that's the googly. So, uh, uh, we have, I have a couple of exposures, uh, some of them reduced, some of them on. Uh, I don't know if I should name specific stocks, but more in the area of pharma is where the comfort is, uh, you know, uh, maybe a mid cap or a you know, smaller stock, not the large ones where you're seeing weakness, like you're seeing weakness in maybe Dr. Reddy, Cipla and so on. So, those I'm definitely avoiding. Uh, I've been holding on to, say, Copran, for example, since uh, several years, so that's something I'm not lightening up on. I have lightened up on many others, some which I even like. For example, we liked Coal India, still I've lightened up significantly there. Uh, even hospitality was a hot sector post-COVID reopening trade, uh, but I've lightened up on Indian hotels for the time being as well. So these are even places where I, which I like, uh, I significantly lightened up. Uh, so, uh, uh, but we'll, we'll, I'll still like them if they consolidate, if they don't break down, uh, I'll probably look at them again. They're not off our list in terms of the long-term investment team, but right now I just feel it's a good point uh, to, you know, pull back and see what's uh, going on. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> which, are the, which are looking the weakest to you? Uh, so... I think uh, the next move down should be pretty broad based because you know what has happened. Uh, one of the themes I see is that chase the weakest stocks. Now, if I chase the weakest, uh, we ask, I think the metals will weaken again because the disinflationary cycle is not over. We've seen a good retracement. The Nifty Metal Index is almost at a 61% retracement of the fall that it saw in the last five, six months. So, as much as I like that sector, maybe a five year basis, I think the downside is not done. And so, uh, post this bounce, I'll be looking for another sell-off. So 61% good level. Uh, IT is a uh, is another one which was strong, but this bounce has been very lethargic. So these are the two sectors which weakened the most recently, and if, even in this bounce have not done so well. Uh, but I do think even stronger areas, like for example, autos look uh, uh, completely great if you just look at the momentum in new highs, uh, and we may not chase them on the way down right away. But I do think that every part of the market is going to, uh, you know, weaken if uh, everything in the uh, macro and earnings space that I'm tracking is out. And so we might not be able to really find a place to hide. So that's, uh, and that is why I said pharma might be the only defense because uh, that's one area which is most ignored. And FMCG has also been the hot sector of the last decade. So while it's done well as a defense in the last two months, it might not be... Uh, uh, Apart from, the, I mean, you can say, see, FMCG, what happens is it's good because sometimes it falls less. So if somebody wants to just be play the relative outperformance game, then fine, FMCG farm is where your defense is, where, uh, you know, the bearish market, they tend to fall less. Uh, but uh, overall, I would think that, you know, every part of the market is going to be affected. Uh, just one final question, Rohit. You're saying the bull case scenario is that markets consolidate. So even if we head down to levels of 17,300, 17,500, you would consider markets consolidating. Um, so what exactly is your base case scenario? How much lower can we go from here on? Because 17,300 could also mean markets are still consolidating. 
Yeah, and uh, and so uh, what that gives us is time to consider the alternate case uh, that we are not uh, still inside the bear market that started last year. Uh, so if I presume we are still inside the bear market, then what I will have to look at is to going back to the uh, you know monthly support levels, uh, which are all the way down to slightly below the fifteen thousand mark, maybe fourteen eight hundred, fourteen five hundred, which is pretty steep to talk about now that you've recovered so far. You know, would you go back down there again? But it's simple that if we are still in a bear market, if it's not over, then we'll go back uh, all the way back down there again. Uh, so I think uh, the time that the market will give us between here and 17,000, we get enough clues as to whether that is happening. And so that is the base case we are working with that, you know, this market will weaken and break 17,500. And once it does, then it will signal that that, that another bigger sell-off is on the way. Uh, but if that doesn't happen, if there's any sign that it's not happening, we'll be on the lookout for that. Mm. Just a couple of things, uh, since you track uh, macros, et cetera, as well, Rohit. Uh, so, I mean, you must have also come across this. Uh, apparently, uh, you know, uh, there has been no instance where the S&P 500, I mean, the U.S. Uh, has pulled back 50% uh, of its, uh, retraced 50% of its losses, uh, and the bottom has not been in. Uh, that is one. We had uh, uh, Mark Matthews, uh, you know, uh, who, with us in the morning as a guest, and he said, uh, in June, uh, you had uh, about just 10 percent of the S&P 500 constituents above the 200 moving averages. That number is 90 percent now, and that's a pretty strong uh, indicator uh, that uh, the bottom is in and we, are, we seem to be out of the woods. He, we, he wrapped up his comments by saying that maybe we are in a Goldilocks scenario, we just don't know it yet, which is that, you know, inflation will become a little benign uh, and, uh, you know, growth will not uh, suffer that much. and. Uh, you know, monetary policy will not also become restrictive. Is is all of that possible, Rohit? Your view? Uh, so while all of that might be possible, it might not be. It doesn't look like the immediate case. You see, uh, if if we start imagining a scenario that is, let's say, six or eight months down the line, uh, and start discounting it now, yes, we could start building that case. Uh, inflation data is going to, you know, definitely slow down, but not at the pace that we want. And as long as it's slowing down bit by bit, like it's gone from 9 to 8.5, now it'll go back to 8, then it'll go to 7.7. .7. In the meantime, you'll still have the Fed hiking. So it's not going to, so it's not that the interest rate pressures are going to go or the dollar pressure is going to go. Now what we can say, okay, will the market really go back to the lows? Will the S&P retest its lows? Or okay, it'll just pull back a bit because it's already discounting uh, the next turn that is coming after that. Uh, slow down. It's a fair argument, uh, which also means that we, we are not seeing immediate runaway. Uh, there's there's going to be a pause in between, and uh, uh, that could also mean in terms of uh, pulling back a retracement on the way down. Now, in terms of the other other data point, I'll just clarify. I'm not sure because people, what they do is they do a lot of quantitative math and say, okay, if the market's recovered 50%, but we, when we use a technical retracement, Every bear market rally in the U.S., whether you take 2008 and you take the first sell-off and then you take the first bounce, and then same you go to 2000 and uh, you go to Y2K, first sell-off and first bounce, uh, both, the, both the retracements are 50 to 61 percent. Okay, right now we haven't uh, crossed barely crossed 50 percent on the S&P, and the Nasdaq has not even touched the 50 percent mark in terms of retracement. If we take a proper technical retracement on the chart, uh, so usually. Somewhere between 50 and 61 is seen, and then the market rolls over. This is what happened in 2000. This is what happened in 2008. And we are not above those levels. So I'm not sure what data point these people are using to say that, you know, market's gone up more than 50% and the worst is over. And, and the other data point, which you're saying stocks above being, being above 200 DMA, I tried up, applying that to our market between 2018 and 2020. And every time the market was topping out, there were around 90 to 92% stocks. In fact, I think, we discussed it that time also, and we were running that data a couple of times, I think, uh, on the channel, how many stocks are above the 200 and below the 200. So when you're in an up-down market, what tends to happen is you'll find that when you cross 90% of stocks above the 200 DMA, it's actually the market stopping up. And then again, when it's uh, when that ratio will drop to sub 20%, it's actually bottoming up. So which is why right in the beginning, I said, are you going to look at this market uh, from a sentiment point of view, so when you use these extreme data points to be contrarian, when everything's up, you'll be bearish, and when everything's down, you'll be bullish. Or are you going to take the stance that, you know, earnings growth is good enough, and now we should ignore this data? Because there's a, there's a time in the market when one thing works, there's a time in the market when another thing works. So right now, for the last few months, it, I mean, in fact, since October of last year, 
taking extreme position, I mean, taking the contrarian position against data has actually worked, and which is where we are getting to now. And so that's uh, unless unless that changes, it might be the time now to actually be uh, more negative than positive on the markets. Rohit, thank you very much uh, for joining in. Great conversation and always good to get the other perspective, right? We have so many people who are saying that, you know, it's time to stay bullish on the markets, but it's good to get the other side uh, in. And <coughs> how you read the data? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, Rima, the other thing is that, if, if what you know, it depends on what you're doing, right? Are you investing? Are you trading? Mm -hmm. I mean, that make, that's a basic fundamental point. So it's not one uh, size fit all conversation. Uh, neither are uh, the types of market participants out there. So Rohit, of course, is... Uh, uh, you know, you, you you approach things differently uh, if when you think about, I mean, uh, from from those two different perspectives, as it should be. Uh, but uh, as you said, interesting conversation with Rohit as always. Uh, I mean, uh, brings you uh, sort of uh, things to think about, which is always necessary. Seventeen eight ninety on the Nifty. We are up. We're down fifty points now. Uh, so after being absolutely flat day on day, uh, the, I mean, this is what the second or the third leg down which also means that the market's been bought, uh, bought back th those many times now. So we'll see.